I am Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is a handover video on a different conversion model of the Master. So as we start walking on the driver's side of the vehicle first, you've got your flu fridge followed by your fridge vent. Using the habitation key, which is this one here, you can open and lock your cassette locker and then push both in to release the door. And in here you have a header tank as well as the cassette. So the header tank is your flush tank, very similar to a caravan and on some motorhomes as well. So this is where you would fill your flush. So if you're buying the twin pack of blue and pink, what you can do is you can put a bit of pink in here followed by water. But what I would do and what a lot of people recommend is using a jug or a watering can and pouring it in here. And you pour it in and you can see here that it'll go up. This is the, the gauge indicator here of how much flush is in your tank. So you can fill that and just keep pushing it in. You might think, looking at the water there, that looks quite full. It's not. It, you push the water in and it starts filling the header tank. It's just the way this filler nozzle sits. To get rid of the, when the cassette indicator is full, to get rid of your waste, you lift the handle and slide the cassette out. You can carry it or you can wheel it to your waste disposal point. And then empty, take the green cap off the top, pop that to one side, start to pour, and as you start to pour, press the green button at the back of the cassette. It allows a bit of air in and stops it plugging. Once you've emptied it, there's a tap, so put some water in, give it a rinse, tip out again before going in with a cap full of chemicals. This can either be green or blue. Uh, green's more environmentally friendly, so you check what your site wants you to use when you're on their site. Just, just green helps get rid of your waste through their septic tanks. Just down here, you've got your waste water drain. So this is your water that you've put down your broke hole. So shower water, hand basin water, dishes water from the kitchen sink. On the way out of your site, drive over the waste disposal point and crack the, ta the tap open. Once you've got the tap open, allow it to drain before you drive off and leave it ajar when you're traveling, just to rock any loose water out of the tank. In the winter, make sure that this is fully drained off so water can't freeze in the wastewater tank and cause any problems. Flue for your boiler. So this allows the fumes out when operating on gas. It does operate on electric as well, but it's in the water. It's an emergent element in the water. So it's more for gas, the gas fumes. But this also gives the location of where the boiler is on board the vehicle. So it's underneath your lounge on this side. To hook the motor home up, this is your hookup point. So get your hookup lead, lift the collar, open the flap, lift the hookup on the vehicle up so that you can connect properly. Once you've connected the van, connect the site or the house if you're home charging <coughs> and do it in reverse when unhooking. On the back of the van, you've got your high level brake light. Here yeah, I'm a bike rack, so this is a 200 DJI Fiat Ducato bike rack. So you pull it down, you can loosen the nuts here and adjust the feet so that when you chock your bike wheels on and tie it in depending on how big your frame is you'll be able to adjust it always have the bikes opposite way around so one bike handlebars this side one bike handlebars this side so you can fit them both on these are for your crossbars for your first and your second bike and always put a lock around your bike frames just to make sure that it's safe and secure when leaving the van unattended Parkland sensors on the bottom bumper. And then you can open the barn doors at the back. Tabletop mounts here. We've got curtains for the back windows. LPG, so liquid petroleum gas. So in here you've got two four and a half propane bottles. To connect the pigtail to the top of the cylinder, it's the opposite threads with the being gas, so it's not righty tighty, it's left to tighten, right to loosen with gas. Then you'd need an adjustable spanner or a gas wrench just to nip it up. Once you've nipped it up to one bottle and you've tied the bottle in with the straps like it is there, so it's nice and safe and secure for when you're traveling, you can turn the bottle on when you're on your site by the top of the cylinder 
just a few turns don't turn it all the way pull the gas through and when you're ready to leave your site make sure your gas cylinder is fully turned off if one cylinder was empty and you've got a reserve you would just take the pigtail off and pop it on the other bottle but like i say make sure your gas is off when you travel and make sure it's strapped in nice and safe and securely always shut this door first then this one but be careful you don't hit your back with the bike rack because it is it does overhang Carrying a hose pipe to fill your fresh water. This is your fresh water filling point. So a hose pipe with some hose pipe fittings as it's mainly just a brass cap on site. And this is where the little key comes in. Goes into there and wait until it overflows, which means you've got a full tank or you can look on board the control panel and see how much water's on board. Should you then be storing the vehicle over the winter or not using it for a couple of weeks or a couple of months, you can allow the water out by this tap here this is a fresh water drain tap so you can open that up and allow the water out the step switch is here you bring the step in and the step out it will automatically retract on ignition and end when it starts tire pressures are on the passenger door slam panel so 4.1 bar which is 59.3 on the front and four and a half bar on the back which is 65 psi so that's your tire pressures there's your tool kit which includes a jack and a brace and a tow and eye underneath your seat and your engine battery lives underneath the floor and a decato not underneath the bonnet with the bonnet release being on the side of the passenger door Under the bonnet, you've got your fluids this side, so you've got your screen wash, your power steering fluid, your coolant, and your brake fluid, followed by your oil filler and oil dipstick for checking the levels of the oil. And then, if you ever need to jump start the vehicle or jump start anything else off the vehicle, you'd earth off here, which is beside the passenger headlight. You might just need to give it a good scrub on there just to get a good connection. And then, this is your positive for giving or receiving a jump start so your control panel which is on board if you go one way first and then one way the other so starting off with going left towards the front of the van it tells you your habitation battery is good it tells you your vehicle battery is good it tells you your internal temperature is 26 degrees inside the van it tells you that you've got 50% of fresh water in your fresh water tank. And then if you go this way, if you want your water pump on, making sure that you've got enough water on first, you just press the square button in the middle. It looks like a stop button really. And you can turn your water pump on and it'll pressurize and then cut out. It's charging the habitation battery as we speak, as we are on hookup. So take the hook about to get a true reflection of the battery. You can set the clock here and set an alarm if you want. The sound of this is medium, but you can take the sound off if you want. And then if the water got so low, you can put an alarm on so that it alerts you that you've got little fresh water in the fresh water tank so that you don't burn out the pump or anything cause any damage and then you go back to the day and the time so to operate the heating and hot water on this vehicle which is from truma combi e controls which are located here so starting off with the bottom one first you've got one to five which is the temperature of the vehicle five is equivalent to 30 degrees so you can adjust the thermostat here and then you've got off there on the o if you just want if you are away in the summer and you didn't want to heat the vehicle or you didn't have any water on board the vehicle so you wouldn't you can't heat water anyway because you'd burn the element out because it's just like boiling a kettle with no water and you're going to damage it you would just have to use gas on its own so this one so that's heating on its own with no water however this one is heating and hot water at 60 degrees and then say you don't want the heating on in the 
summer, which I think I was getting at at the start of the video because I've confused myself a bit. You've got the hot water settings here. So you've got hot water at 60 degrees with no heating. 40 degrees of hot water with no heating. So when showering, you might want on 40. Uh, when doing the dishes, you might want on 60, but you can choose the temperature of the water that you want. And that's 10 liters at a time out of the boiler. So that's whether you've got the heating and the hot water on or just the heating or the hot water on. So you can choose what you're heating. Next is how we're heating it. So the next dial is how we're heating it off. So what source available to the vehicle is going to be used to heat the, the water, the van or both. So you've got at the top here, two wavy lines, which is 1500 watts of mains electric when you're hooked up. So you'd use that on most sites throughout the UK. Smaller sites and airs abroad, you may have to use one wiggly line, which is 750 watts of mains power because they're not as generous with their electric or they might be on a smaller site. Gas on its own, which you'd use if you were wild camping. So if you were physically weren't hooked up to anything, you can't use electric to, you can't use electric in the van because you haven't got it. You'd have to use gas to heat the water, the vehicle or either. Then you've got one wiggly line and gas together. This is 750 watts and gas, which is known as mixture one. However, mixture two is 1500 watts of electric and gas. You'd use this in the winter if you're away in November, December time, and it was really cold. What you can do is you can put it on for 20 minutes or so. You'll not want to use your gas the whole time you're away, but it'll take the chill off the van and get it up to a living temperature and then allow the electric. So take it off this and back on this too and allow the electric to continue to maintain and provide the heating for the vehicle and the hot water off electric. So to operate your Dometic fridge, you've got an on off button here. So it's like a double sided button. So you've got on off one side and you've got mode the other. So if you press this side of the button, you can turn the fridge off. If you turn it off, when you're storing it, leave the door open by pressing here pins come out and then what you can do is rest the door upon it it's loose it allows air to circulate in and out the fridge to avoid smells when you're leaving the van parked up and not in use over the winter or when you're just not using it for a couple of weeks because otherwise it forms an airtight seal and it will cause damage to it will not cause damage but it would cause smells and mold inside the fridge and then you'd have to come and clean it out turn it back on You've got modes, so you've got three sources this fridge runs off. So mains 230 volt, battery, which is when the engine's running, not the leisure battery. So it's when you're traveling, it'll just keep it nice. And at the same temperature, it was that when departing. And it acts like a giant cool box, really. Or you've got gas when you're wild camping and you're not hooked up. So to change, you would press here. So if you are at home, what I would do is a few days before your trip away, I'd hook the van up allow the leisure battery to take a good charge and allow the fridge to be on allow that to get the temperature the day before put your shopping in allow that to chill overnight and then before i start the when i unhook the van to go away in the next following morning i would just turn it down to battery as soon as you start the engine this red light will go off because it's getting a feed from the 12 volt off the alternator it's not at the minute because the engine's not running that's why it's flashing red and then When you get to your site, either go back to mains or if you go wild camp and you turn down to gas and it'll self-ignite. You'll hear it clicking in the background and it'll ignite. There you are, it's ignited on gas. This is your temperature, so when pre-chilling, have it on the, big, the bigger the snowflake, the colder it is. So that's freezing, so that's the highest it'll go. Bring it down once you've put your shopping in, just so it doesn't freeze it. But in the summer, you may have to have it on the bigger snowflake, just so it performs well in the heat that we're having at the moment. So in the kitchen, you've got four gas burners. So you've got igniter on the front here, which is a 12 volt ignition.
So there you go, four gas rings, which are all lit. Allow them to cool before you put this lid down, because the lid's glass, it will smash if you put the lid down when it's still too warm. Underneath, you've got your grill. So that's your grill on. And under the grill, Takes a little bit to get the gas through, but that's the oven going. If you need any parts for this oven, this is a Smev oven. They're the details that you need to give to us to get parts for it. Cutlery drawer, storage drawer, storage cupboard. Turn the turnbuckle, and you've got some extra. Worktop space for when you're using the hob oven or doing your dishes. It's just showing that your water pump's working and your hot water is coming through there as the water's getting warm because the hot water system is working as it should. And then to get this back down, there's a little lever on the front here. You need to pull that and that'll fold back down, put the turnbuckle on and just underneath that you've got a small wheel spin. These lights, so this type of light that's on the ceiling, there's a few around the van. Make sure the 12 volt system's on and then you can turn them on and off via the light itself. In this cupboard here, this is where your leisure battery lives, in this box. So your leisure battery's in there. So this is a, if I just remove the cover, and you can slide this out slightly so if you ever need to change it you can this battery is a 120 amp hour battery so it's a sealed battery this one you've got your main battery fuse on there so you've got three fuses on here actually you've got 40 amp breaker fuse a 10 amp fuse spurt and a 5 amp so if you've got any problems just check that them fuses haven't gone first off the main battery because they'll be supplying the 12 volt to the vehicle and to certain items from the battery so to make the bed up at the back you can either use it as two singles or you can would have been the u-shaped lounge if you remove the middle cushion at the back you can then put your backrests in. So your backrests can go into here once you've extended the frame out, which there's turnbuckles on to the small bit at the back and the larger bit at the front on both sides. And then you can pop your base, your backrests next to your base cushions in the void. It's a snug fit. What I'd recommend is just turn everything upside down, you get a flatter surface to sleep on, you can put a fitted sheet on, you can put your duvets on, and so it's far more comfy sleeping on the back than it is the front, but it's entirely up to yourself. So underneath the bench seat, behind the washroom, on the driver's side of the vehicle, is where you have your fuses. So your fuses are here, this is your fuse box, um, and it has nine fuses on there. Carry some spare fuses with you just in case a fuse does blow. If it's not the ones off the leisure battery, because the leisure battery will be supplying the power to here as well, with it being a 12 volt system, try the fuses in here. If one fuse is blown, just replenish it and pop a fuse in. So that's why it's a good idea to carry some spare fuses with you. Also, if it's 240 volt related and you're not getting power or you want to check, try this is your RCD unit. So try tripping the van out. If the van does trip, you've got power there. If it doesn't trip, it's where you're getting the power from if you're connected with a hookah bleed. If you've, however, tripped the van, try here before you try your main site. And then you've got your boiler. So your boiler does two jobs, provides the vehicle with heating, air blown heating. And it also stores 10 litres of water in the boiler at any one time. So in the winter when you're storing it, it's very important that you get that 10 litres out so it doesn't freeze with us having really cold temperatures in the winter. So, 
it's got what's known as an anti-frost valve on which is just down here and it's a black box with a blue diamond on the front here and at the front which is where my finger is right at the bottom there's a blue button at three degrees this will automatically open and allow the water out however if you're putting it away i would always open the valve manually myself and to do so you just turn it there's a button at the bottom the pump's kicking in because i've got the pump on but when you do it don't have the pump on just come in and open it with no power on once you've opened the pump once you've opened here open all the taps open all the taps throughout the van open the fresh and the waste outside make sure every water item is left open so that water can't sit in it and cause any damage to the tank the boiler the pipework the taps themselves and then when you're ready to reuse it you just need to turn the diamond on the top and push the button in if you try if you take an arrow away in the winter uh, when it's still cold and the button won't stay in fill it with water don't put your pump on because as soon as you put your pump on the water's going to drain straight out because it's trying to fill the boiler and it's open so the circuit is open so it's just going to drain it off so fill it with water don't put the pump on connect the van to mains or gas and put the heating on first after 10 15 minutes of the heating being on this area will be warm you'll be able to push that button in at the bottom of the box the the anti-frost valve and it will stay shut then you'll be able to prime the water through so cold you get a pressurized flow hot little cough and sprut air until you fill this with 10 liters it's just pushing all the air out of here until you get a pressurized flow but make sure you drain it down because it's not covered up by the warranty and it could be a costly mistake to make so in the washroom to operate the toilet make sure the pump's on press this blue button you'll get your fl your flush liquid from your header tank that you filled outside so it'll be white and it'll be pink if you've put any pink in there that's just water that we've put in and then flush it first before you use the toilet you want to open the blade use the toilet flush it after use and close green light will come on here when it is full and that indicates that the cassette is full and it's making sure that this is shut the cassette will come out the side of the van if that is left open the cassette's not coming out because the mechanism's engaged but you wouldn't leave it open because it leaves the trap door open and all the smells so once you've used it close shut the lid that goes green time to empty rinse and replenish with chemical Fan basin tap, which is also your shower head, which clips up here. Toiletry cabinet, shower screen goes round and you've got a light the same as the ones in the living space of the vehicle.